I'm Melissa Burns, and I'm Associate Professor of History at Southwestern University. As long as we know, people have been looting art. Uh, the very first recorded cultural bandits were the Elamites. The Elamites stole the celebratory stone tablet of Naram Sim in about 1250 BC, so a little over 3,000 years ago. We also have Homer. Um, here's the Odyssey right here. Uh, Homer tells us that um, the Greeks sacked the city of Troy, and the Bible tells us about how Nebuchadnezzar ransacked the, the Temple of Solomon. So again, art looting appears to be a really important part of human war warfare. So art theft usually comes from a desire to show off a lot of wealth and power, and one of the best examples of this is the Romans. The Romans just had this huge appetite for cultural acquisition. They took art and artifacts from everywhere that they conquered. A lot of Roman victory parades included marching artworks through the city along with their prisoners. So they wanted to show that they were politically dominant. They wanted to show that they had control, not just of the people, but of the whole culture and the whole territory that they were taking over. The Romans took quite a lot of Greek art. Uh, they sacked the city of Jerusalem. Uh, that's another sort of popular target. But the Romans were, were important in that they were some of the first to really start to, to steal a lot of Egyptian art. And here they're trendsetters. So a lot of people from the Romans and all the way through today, Egyptian art is something that people really like to control. People like to have Egyptian artifacts. Why is that? Well, Egypt is seen as the first big human civilization. And so if you can control Egypt, then you are heir to that civilization. So the big thing the Romans would take out of Egypt is actually obelisks. So you see these the big, tall obelisks, these stone structures all over the city of Rome. And that's something that a lot of conquering powers would take away from Egypt. So we'll see them in France and we'll see them in Britain and elsewhere. I'd say that the man who really made an art out of art theft is Napoleon Bonaparte. And if you've ever seen a portrait of Napoleon, you can tell this is a guy who knows how to use art for political purposes. He really likes to make himself this amazing, glorious general or this really strong sort of imperial figure. You know, his, his portraits have, have, have a lot of power behind them. But before he became the emperor of, of, of France, Napoleon was a general. As a general, he actually made cultural acquisition really central to his military campaigns. So when he went into Germany and especially down Italy and into Egypt, told you Egypt would come back, he brought a lot of archaeologists and other scholars with him. So part of his army were these scholars, were these scientists, were these people who could figure out what the, these art and artifacts were and which ones were actually worth taking home. So just like the Romans, Napoleon really saw this, these spoils of conquest as, as evidence for his, his military prowess, for his military glory. Um, he was really invested in claiming Greco-Roman art and then Egyptian art. He also had his archaeologists going and digging through and finding all of these, these other artifacts. One of the things that they found was the Rosetta Stone. And the Rosetta Stone actually is a key for us to understanding um, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. So we can thank Napoleon for the fact that we know what some of those um, old Egyptian uh, paintings actually say. Now the other person who's really famous for looting art, infamous really, is Hitler. Now, Hitler was notorious for being a failed artist himself. He wanted to be a painter, and perhaps if he'd been good, the 20th century would have looked a little different. But he was terrible, and so he became one of the uh, worst dictators we've seen. Um, he, therefore, because he had this background in art, Hitler thought a lot about artistic value, and he had very strong opinions about these things. Um, one of the things he did as he came to power is he started a, a policy of, of reclaiming German art uh, that had been stolen during the Napoleonic Wars. So he went around Europe and as he conquered new territories, he took art back uh, that, that he thought belonged to the Germans. And eventually he tried to make the argument that the entire European artistic tradition had German roots and therefore he had the right to claim any of the pieces he found as he moved through Europe. By the end of the 19th century, people started to get a little worried, right? Folks were thinking, you know, we're going to run out of things that are worth looting, so maybe we should start to try to protect things. And so in 1899, uh, the very first um, international peace conference was held at The Hague. And one of the things that The Hague conventions uh, that came out of that conference talk about is the need to protect art and the need to protect cultural buildings and the need to protect um, artifacts and things that are important to people's culture. So they pres the, the Hague conventions specifically prohibited pillaging. Unfortunately, a lot of the people who signed those treaties didn't really pay much heed to them, and the Germans were some of the worst offenders on this. So during the First World War, even before Hitler, you had the Kaiser's armies doing a lot of pillaging through all of the lands that they invaded 
Um, and the, the, the end of that war bought, brought yet another round of negotiations on art looting. And so the Treaty of Versailles, along with saying that you know, Germany is guilty for the war, one of the things it says is that Germany had to repatriate all the art that it had stolen, and that in cases where they had destroyed art as part of their battle, they had to give items or objects of equal value from their collections to the countries that they had invaded. But one of the most memorable art recovery programs um, was launched during the Second World War, so to, to, in response to Hitler's massive art looting campaign. And this is the Monuments, Fine Arts, and Archives program. Uh, it's better known as the Monuments Men, and it was started by U.S. President Roosevelt and General Eisenhower as a way, again, to kind of recover all of the artworks that were being stolen uh, by the Nazis. And so the Monuments Men, it was a group of soldiers and civilians, women and men, uh, despite the name, um, and these women and men actually worked to find and save and return countless uh, works of art. The wars of the 21st century have actually ushered in a whole new generation of art thefts and art protectors. Um, so for instance, the war in Iraq in April 2003, as uh, troops were entering into Baghdad, there were um, sort of attacks on the Iraqi National Museum and the Saddam Art Center. People went in and were trying to sort of take away artifacts or destroy them. Uh, a lot of local Iraqi citizens, as well as foreigners and soldiers, would carry off uh, sort of souvenirs of, of their time in Baghdad. The Americans and, and the British troops who came in initially were criticized for the fact that they weren't doing enough to protect the artistic heritage in, in Iraq. And so what the Americans and the British did is they set up a, a new task force, so a new version of the Monuments Men, that where all of these soldiers and civilians alike worked to, to try to protect the artistic heritage and the cultural heritage of Iraq and of that part of the world. More recent years have brought so many more uh, stories of pillaging. So there was a lot of um, ransacking of museums during the political unrest in Egypt. Uh, in the civil war in Syria, all six of Syria's uh, world heritage sites have been totally plundered, as have many archaeological sites all across Syria. So clearly, I think what this tells us is that we still need the services of men and women, like the Monuments Men, like the folks who wrote the treaties after the Napoleonic Wars or in the Hague Conventions. We still need those people who think that it's important to protect the art and architecture and artifacts, uh, to protect the cultural heritage of our world.